the truth always lies somewhere in the middle. Because I definitely think father groomed her. Oh, heavily. for sure. Um, she would have never been able to get married. Oh, yeah. Oh, he would have stopped that mm -hmm. at every, every cost. Um, I definitely think he groomed her and at the risk of sounding like victim blaming, um, I think she wanted his approval and des she was so desperately seeking him, it made it easier for him to um, well, she's romanticizing it at that point. Yeah. Um, Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, Dr. LaFanya Jones Hines, and Dr. Nichelle Wall. Welcome back to session 120, Eve's Bayou 1997. This is a movie mental breakdown. Today's mood music is brought to you by the beautiful Etta James, A Sunday Kind of Love. I, I don't know <laughs> if I've ever heard that song. Um, it's in her, so they can see our face. Oh. It's in her scene where she's in her parlor and it goes, A Sunday. Oh, we go, we go mm. into some other stuff. I'll play it later because yeah. we ain't got no license I'm for that yet. I'm going to go back and listen to that because I uh, like Etta James. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she's famous mostly for her. Uh-huh. That's her most mm -hmm. probably most known song. Okay. Uh, I must say that re-watching this film, I was like, I don't remember this movie going this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember this movie very Different. differently I than what it like, actually was. But, you know, before we jump into, you know, we got to get the cast. But I just want to put yeah. that out there. This movie was not what I remember. It and being. I don't, I don't, watching it the second, this time, I'm like, why was this movie so popular? I love this movie, but I'm also Creole, so I see other stuff in the film going on. And I've watched the director edition of it. Mm. Gotcha. So I guess I must have watched the made for TV. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that's yeah, well, that's what everybody saw. They made her cut it. They made her cut lot, well, and we'll talk about this later. But they made her cut large parts and full characters out of the, the movie. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, so, of course, the the stars of the show are Journey Smollett. She plays Eve. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson uh, plays <laughs> Luis <laughs> or Louis. Uh, Megan Good plays Cicely. Lynn Whitfield plays Roz, um, and this and Jake Smollett plays Poe. This is the primary family in the film. Um, Debbie Morgan plays Moselle, and we're gonna add these people, but you know they are. I don't know. They're secondary cast. Secondary, yes. Uh, Lisa Nicole Carson plays uh, Maddie Moreau. Uh, her husband is played by. Now we, I'm sorry, I am not Creole, so forgive my butchering of this name. Uh, Roger Gwynvuer. Uh, let's see who else. Vondi Curtis Hall plays Julian. Their grandmother is played by, her name's Grand Mir. Uh, she's played and by. Mayor. Mayor. <laughs> see, again, I told you, I'm not it's okay. Creole. I'm a, I got the American tongue. Uh, she's played by Ethel Eiler. And who else we got here? We have Tamara Tooney, who most people know from uh, is God it, and Light. Well, God and Light, but she was on, uh, is it SVU? Mm. A crime show? I can't remember, but she's the uh, narrator of the film. Mm -hmm. We have Branford Marsalis, which is the husband of the time for Moselle. And we also have the beautiful Diane Carroll. Mm -hmm. She plays Elzora. Yes. She the is. voodoo priestess. There we go. <laughs> okay so i i can't remember when this movie is set in what time if they ever 1960s. 60s okay mm -hmm. in my head i was thinking the 40s um <laughs> I was like, it, it seems a lot older than the 60s but it is what it is so in our opening scene we just get like um the narrator who is speaking in the voice of eve and she's talking about the summer of when she was 10 years old. And in her mind, she, you know, um, 
unalive to her father. And something interesting that is, she says in the beginning is that um, memories are just a series of in- images mm-hmm. and that they're elusive. Some are imprinted um, indelibly on the brain. And I thought that was true because when you think about core memories and trauma mm-hmm. and things like that, yeah. you tend to remember those things very vividly mm-hmm. versus run of the mill everyday stuff like, oh, I went to you know McDonald's today. Mm-hmm. You're not going to remember that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do this a lot when I'm working with parents uh, that feel guilty about doing things for themselves. You know, I always ask them, you know, do you remember, you know, October 12th, 2000? And usually they'll be like, no, I I don't. I say exactly. (laughs) So go buy yourself the shoes. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know what your mama did October 12th, 2000. Your child is not going to know what you did October 12th, 2022. Mm -hmm. Stop feeling guilty. Uh, So, but when you think about a traumatic event, like you thinking that you, you know, potentially, um, you know, made your father deceased, that's Mm going to be a memory and a timeline that's going to be like forever, you know, emblazoned in your brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in this midst of this, she's talking about, you know, them and how they own the bayou and how that came to be. Um, but they are part of a family line that apparently is a very steeped in voodoo. Well, it's not necessarily, she didn't really say that voodoo at the time because the mother, the grandmother is the one, the line that it goes through and the father and she used her gifts and talents and all that kind of stuff to save him from whatever he had, probably somebody fever. Um, from that time period, but they never come out fully and say what it is. Well, yeah. it really it really seems like um, I can't. Lewis, what's the Samuel S. Jackson thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lewis, he seemed to. They seem to not believe in it, or he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, because he's medicine. because he's a, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it. It seems to be more of his sister, and it, his, his mom don't mm-hmm. seem to believe it she, either. No, she says she do. She said, "Now you know." You she said he called her crazy, crazy. Oh, okay. but her stuff always come to pass. She, oh, mm-hmm. I thought that was a uh, Lynn Whitfield who said that, but it was the mom. Yeah. Okay. They know. You better pay attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, Roz, played by Lynn Whitfield, she seems to believe it as well. Yeah, she does. It's just and the kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially Eve. For sure. <laughs> As we will see later on. Right. Now, in the opening part of the movie, the parents are throwing uh, a party, and this seems to be like it's a regular occurrence. Um, as everybody knows what to do. Everybody dancing, having a good time. The kids eventually are serving drinks. Everybody knows, you know, that this is the thing mm-hmm. for this family home, right? Um, but what you also see in this scene is Rod, not Ross, mm-mm. Maddie. Maddie Moreau mm. and Louis or Louis dancing real inappropriately close. And, you know, they was doing the, the grind on me before dancing it was real called. Standing real close. <laughs> <laughs> standing real the close. On me. <laughs> um, and what I thought was interesting in this scene was that Roz was not, like, she was not reacting negatively to him dancing with her she didn't seem to be concerned Mm -mm. about their behavior no i don't think anybody was as far as the spouses well well, i think the husband was because he did he was like looking side-eyed like that don't look good but i he he to me Mm -hmm. his facial expression i I didn't see that until later just because he's really close with lewis and then he thinks his wife hung the stars and the moon. So I think he was still in the naive world until he has a conversation with a little person later in the. Mm -hmm. Now he may not have thought that they were doing all that, but I, and what I saw of him was he still thought that the way they was dancing was inappropriate. I would definitely say the grandmother thought it Mm -hmm. (laughs) because she was like, whatever she said, I can't remember what she said, but basically like get your behind out of my face. Mm -hmm. Um, But I thought it was interesting that outside of, you know, potentially the husband and the grandmother, 
nobody saw anything and i'm like this is just out here in the open and like y'all like close in each other face like this is this ain't swing out that y'all yeah, doing nobody likes her because evidently she has this reputation reputation mm -hmm. yeah so i mean it it is following her mm -hmm. it is it is of course you know because this is the, the the time of the day you know the kids are running around and uh i thought that little scene with her with the chocolate covered bees was really cute um and i thought her relationship with moselle's husband at, at the time uh mm -hmm. harry was very cute as well mm -hmm. you know he took a very uh, good photo mm -hmm. of roz and moselle and you could tell that he seemed like he was really involved with the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that out of some of her other husbands, he probably was one that was like really solidly rooted in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then Sis Sisley, I said, Well, she is a little mama. Parentified beyond mm -hmm. <laughs> belief. Yeah. Eldest daughter. Definitely. Uh, because she came in and was like, quoting J Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> I was like, she called them Mercutio and Tybalt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, that's what they did. Yeah. You know, she, she, she did read a lot. Both of, you know, even um later in the, the movie, Eve is quoting Shakespeare and all these mm. other kind of things. And she's like, oh, so y'all don't, y'all don't hear me quoting it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's just a sign of their prestige, their family, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you also see the beginnings of how the children are seen differently mm -hmm. or how the children perceive themselves to be seen differently. Um, because, you know, Louis or Louis, what do we want? We want to go with Louis or Louis? Louis. That's okay. Uh, so <laughs> with, huh? I said that's going to be easy. Okay. <laughs> so Lewis asks Cicely to dance and, you know, apparently this is their thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can see Eve get upset because oh, she, she got jealous, baby. Yes. <laughs> Instantly. Mm -hmm. Cause she wants to be able to do that same thing with her father, but you know, kids only see from their perspective at the time and that she probably had her thing with her father, mm -hmm. but she wanted to do the thing that her and her, her sister and her father did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, jealousy is a an interesting thing. Well, I, it, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I think that's one of the things that children don't understand is that parents have a different relationship with each of you. If there are multiples, the, um, parents have a different relationship with each of you. And just because your thing is not their thing, it doesn't mean that they love you any less, but it's perceived to like, I'm not getting as much attention or you don't love me uh, as much as you love the other, you know, and it can affect their, their relationship with their siblings. That's how sibling rivalry can happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think also it's important to realize in this situation, um Sicily is about to go into a place of entering society as a woman so it's a little bit different but also as we will learn later there is favoritism this is not just an imagination some something that um Eve has imagined in her mind there actually is hardcore favoritism for Sicily from her father so mm -hmm. yeah I think he definitely treated them differently um it just sucks that we don't get to see how he like what his relationship with each of them was unfortunately mm -hmm. so i i think he treated them different differently but i also think we have to look at the age because um cicely is older so she was the only child for four years so he developed a a a, a bond with her before the other children and not that he uh, obviously not that he loves the other children any less i don't know if i ever saw him interacting Interact with, with the, the little boy no but eve he really wasn't in the film a whole lot exactly <laughs> but eve he still s seemed to have his own type of because she went with him on his rounds she did uh but i think eve was a little bit more assertive than maybe cicely was i think C uh, cicely was very doting to her father mm -hmm. um but eve was more outspoken yeah i'm gonna say commanding but i don't mean that in a negative uh connotation like she was going to go after what she wanted from him yeah 
Yeah, Eve is very much like her aunt, and um, Cicely is very much like her mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I would agree well, with. Well, yes, because her that's what she was essentially doing, being the little woman of the house, yeah. getting that from her mom. Who, as Gary we will see. Uh, yeah. As we will see later on. But of course, this upsets Eve um, as she's seeing, you know, Cicely and her father, you know, do their typical thing. She runs off to the shed. Um, and what I did like about that is that she, even though she stomped off, she did remove herself from the situation and she did not cause a scene. Mm -hmm. as a lot of children would probably do whine and kind of cry and make a big old fuss mm -hmm. um, that she was like, you know what, let me go deal with my feelings. Cause I'm in the carriage house, mm -hmm. in the carriage house, I'm feeling some kind of way and let me go deal with it. Um, now what would have been better for my heart is if somebody would have noticed that mm -hmm. and gone to console her. However, I understand there's a lot going on and you know, and they're dancing as a party. Um, but that would have been ideal. Uh, I wrote in my notes. I said, her little jealousy wore her out. <laughs> it did. She had to go take her nap. Boy. Uh, it was their bedtime for sure. Mm -hmm. It was definitely seemed like it was late yeah so this is where the core memory develops mm -hmm. and you know you hear uh footsteps in the dark and a little rustling and bustling going on and poor little thing wake up and she don't know what's going on you know you're rubbing your eyes and you see things in the dark and you hear things and you get shocked so what she see is uh her father and maddie moreau uh over there still dancing too close mm -hmm. <laughs> doing skin on skin at this yeah point. they weren't mm -hmm. doing the horizontal polka they were uh it was vertical vertical <laughs> she was making it hard for him okay <laughs> I feel a little yeah, she felt it all right, right? inserted right <laughs> uh and of course they're both shocked to learn that they are not in the shed alone and that eve is there and has caught them, you know, doing the nasty. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I just don't like this. I mean, there's several scenes in this movie that I was like, cringe. But one, this one in particular, I was like, I hope this is the cutting and that she wasn't actually watching them do this in this scene. Cause I was like, that would be traumatizing. I would imagine even as a child actress. So I hope this is a lot of um, splicing together. Outside of that, um, I think the way he handled that initially was poor. Because um, which it, part? When he went to pick her up mm -hmm. and like essentially was trying to almost convince her that you didn't see what you think you saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand why he did that. Of course, you're not going to try to be able to sit here and admit to your child that you're, you know, cheating on your wife yeah um but she know right i just hate that she had such a visceral reaction because it sent her into a full panic attack you absolutely know, like, like literally had to do the weighted mm -hmm. hug slash blanket on mm -hmm. her you know yeah. what i mean it was you see how much trauma his behaviors are having from the get-go in this movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i hate that she was apologizing for scaring them mm -hmm. i'm like why? Well, I mean, she's, she's a kid, a kid yeah. so she, she don't know what else to say mm -hmm. or what else to do other than apologize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things like one, there's no good. I don't think there's any real good response that you can have in a moment like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it just didn't seem to really outside of the moment of kind of hugging her through that panic moment. It didn't really seem like it was that he was really trying to take care of Eve. No. That he well, he was, was trying to, he, well, I, I understand. I mean, I agree and I understand what you're saying, but the thing about it is in that moment, he, he is really trying to convince her that she didn't see what, cause now he's caught. Yeah. You know, so of course, like he's going to try and talk him, talk his self out of what she just saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was thinking about like the emotional manipulation of like when you go out, daddy loves you so much. Mm -hmm. It's the narcissism for me. And I'm just like, uh-uh, you like, that's the next words out of your mouth to your child. I, right. It was just like, uh This is, if you pay attention closely to Lewis's 
arc in this movie, he does not have any good relationships with any men. And he talks crazy to most of all of the women, Mm -hmm. except for one, which is Sicily. Mm -hmm. Every other one he talked crazy to. So this man ain't wrapped correctly or tightly. I would agree with that. Well, (laughs) it, it... Pro- the thing about it is all of the men he probably sleeping with their wives except for his sister because <laughs> he got into an argument with harry in the beginning too but that's the only one woman he, in the town he ain't sleeping with that's, yes oh and i thought she asked him a great question you love mama i thought it was a good question um and i, I thought- don't like his response but mm-hmm I don't like his response, but what I did say, what I put in my notes was, I think this supports the idea that you can, you can still love your spouse, but you, that doesn't mean that you won't cheat on them. You Mm -hmm. know, that two complex things can exist at the same time. You know, he is obviously a flawed individual, but that didn't mean that he didn't love his wife. He just loved himself. Other women too. And other women. And he's polyamorous. That's the reality of the situation. He's polyamorous in a time where it's not acceptable to be polyamorous. So he chooses, as they would have to, a monoamorous woman. And they enter into this agreement that is not conducive to him. Mm -hmm. And it is deceptive to her. And I think that's something that we have to realize in a lot of these situations. It don't make it right because there's still all that deception in there. But a lot of times in these type of situations, there is a a monogamous person marrying a polyamorous person, and they don't need to be together. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing about his response to me, he's, his response was, your mother is the most beautiful, perfect woman I have ever met. Mm-hmm. And I think he believed that. I think he does. Mm-hmm. But the thing, what he now has done is put a <clears throat> a core belief in her mind that it doesn't matter how beautiful or how perfect I am, I will never be enough. Yeah. And I don't, that's how people, I I, I was going to say women, but people develop these concepts of I'll never be enough. Even if you, you know, I'm suited and booted. My hair is always done. My nails are always done. My toes are done. My makeup is flawless. I got a perfect shape. What they think is a perfect shape. Like it's never going to be enough. And that's why we have these Mm -hmm. uh, cosmetic surgeries and always trying to make yourself different because you you just think if I just change this little bit of piece right here, I'll be more perfect and you it it will never be enough. There's a disconnect between this is showing up as my value, my worth Mm -hmm. in getting somebody and the realization that he wants multiple things that does not match up with me. And there, you hardly ever, until like something horrible happens, see um, the per, the monogamous person finally get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they always think it's me. I need to do more. Or I need to stay. And I get that this is the '60s, so times are a little bit different as far as um, marriage and divorce and things like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's what we see in therapy all the time. Absolutely. That's this still happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it yeah. does. You know, of course, mom comes outside and she can tell immediately, you know, parental intuition is a strong thing. Mm -hmm. And she can tell something's wrong with her daughter, but, you know, neither one of them is going to say Mm -hmm. uh, what it is. And so hold on before you I, I also like the fact that Eve addressed what her issue was with him, too, because she asked him why he never dances with her in public, Mm -hmm. which was why she went into the carriage thing he still gave up i know hot mess answer mm-hmm. like i my favorite person in this movie is Eve because as young as she is she let everybody have it now she had to get it back sometimes but she let everybody have it i feel like uh journey smollett did a great job of playing this role oh like she's yes. a phenomenal yeah. actress in pretty much anything i've seen her in but for her to be this young, oh, pulling, she was this. I said, mm-hmm. I don't know why y'all didn't win because they got nominated for so many things and won none. Oh, oh wow. no, she did she did an awesome job, wonderfully in this film. Mm-hmm. I mean, beyond her years yeah. at yeah. the time, yeah. I was so definitely like saying, kids got skills when they mm. keep themselves straight yeah. together. No, her acting skills were on point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. 
But of course, mom comes outside, you know, she sees that something's wrong with her. Of course, nobody's going to say anything, uh, which makes sense. You yeah. know, who <laughs> as a child, I'm like, I think I saw this, but my dad is kind of trying to gloss it over. And I don't even know how to explain what I saw. Of course, as the husband, you definitely not about to put yourself out oh, there. Of course not. Um, so mom is just kind of left there with her intuition of feeling something's wrong, but I don't even know what to ask. Mm hmm. So of course she sends the um, Eve upstairs to go to sleep and you can tell she's seeking connection with her husband because she asks him, Hey, you coming in? Like, mm. of course, you know, he got to sit out there and smoke his cigarette and calm himself down and like hope and wish and pray like, that his <laughs> daughter don't say like, nothing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let me get myself together. Mm. Mm -mm. But so he doesn't come upstairs. Eve is rightfully upset mm -hmm. um and Cicely broke her heart oh of course that's, I mean you to your that's your daddy mm -hmm. uh, so this happens a lot when people get into um situations where there's betrayal in a relationship is that the person that's been betrayed even though Eve herself wasn't betrayed but she saw a betrayal mm -hmm is that it changes your view of the other person. Yeah. So whereas we tend to pedestalize people in our lives, now that has made you human in a way that I never anticipated you being human. Well, I would even say that Eve was betrayed because she had her father on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. So yes, her mom was betrayed unknowing if she didn't know she was, but mm -hmm. I would say Eve, because when you are a daddy's girl, you see you put your father on this pedestal that he can do no wrong mm -hmm. you know so when she saw that like you said when when she saw that he did wrong now it humanized him mm -hmm. this scene with her coming into their shared bedroom her and Cicely was also eye-opening because you see immediately Cicely goes into Ooh. little mama mode she's rescuing her sister in an unhealthy way yes. but she's also most importantly rescuing her father mm -hmm. um and you can tell that she already know these things been happening because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she hers has already been shattered but she just went a different direction right she did Eve went. Cause I said, baby, the suppression and denial is strong up in here. Cause yeah. Megan was playing her part too. <laughs> yeah. I said, y'all better be in here acting as mm -hmm. kids. Said mm -hmm. it <laughs> is strong. We went straight into them distortions. Yes, like, I was like, Whoop. man, this is the beginning of you teaching her to not to believe what she see. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you talking about not being able to trust somebody. You can't even trust. She Now she can't even trust her. And so how's she going to trust her people? did it. Her yeah. sister, you know, she mm -hmm. got it from her dad. She's like, well, dad, I, I still feel like I saw what I saw. Mm -hmm. But when you, your peer, and they have such a, a loving relationship with each mm -hmm. other, says no, that's not what you Let me tell. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> and painted a whole picture. I right. Said, Wait a minute. We in a, we with in a, a movie. Again. Right. Okay. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, are you sure? <laughs> and then she sealed the deal with said, you almost scared me. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you the just wrapped it right on up with a bow. Oh, it just breaks my heart. Yeah. You know, because now Eve is definitely torn. And this is uh, what I wrote in here is how people start to have repressed memories. And when you end up in therapy 20, 30 years later, and you're like, well, I think mm -hmm. I feel like something happened. Yeah to me and i'm not quite sure sometimes it comes from situations like this mm -hmm. where someone has planted an idea in your head that what you experienced did not actually happen mm -hmm. yep. so. but and you that's how you also uh end up having someone to leave the family or be distant from the family mm -hmm. because y'all don't believe what i saw and y'all trying to make me believe make me think I can't believe what I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's why that night with everything that continued happening, um, of course, not going into the aunt yet, but the, the fight that they were having and then um, Eve displaying her first signs of her visions mm -hmm. um, and it not being a good vision. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's showing that probably the trauma of experiencing what she experienced in the carriage house is probably what has led to the visions coming because typically you don't see, see people in that type of family where it is known that 
people tend to have gifts, you typically don't see it that same. Mm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, traumatic situations, whether they're big T traumas or little T traumas, mm-hmm. uh, can open you up yeah. for a lot of things. Yeah, you know, it makes you very sensitive mm-hmm. uh, in a way that you hadn't been sensitive before. Uh, I think this next part here also communicates on what you were saying. I can't remember which one y'all were saying uh, about him not having good relationships oh. with mm-hmm. men. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, him almost being um, degrading. Yep. You know, like he was talking all kind of mess and, yeah. and just putting the man down mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. Laughing at him. Mm-hmm. I was like, you don't talk to Wynton Marsalis brother like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just was a lot. And then of course here comes Cicely and Eve too. But here comes again being a little mama trying to protect her father. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, girl, go to bed. And she was so smart. Mouthed. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. And the beginnings of disrespect towards her mother. Yeah. You yes. start to see this here. Yeah. Because now she's in competition with her. Mm-hmm. Feel Ooh. myself, Feel my- <laughs> <laughs> you know, but what we don't know at this time is that she is at the beginning stages of puberty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, any young girl that has ever gone through that stage, you have no idea what is truly happening to you. You don't know that the mm-hmm. like intense rage that it's building up inside of you, you really have no idea idea what's happening hostage by your body (laughs) and don't even know it yet right don't even understand at all and i imagine during these times you know these are not very open discussions that you're having with your child Mm -hmm. um and there seemed like there may have been a level of embarrassment which is why she didn't tell Mm -hmm. uh, her family either but of course moselle and her husband drive off and we learned uh, very soon after that uh after eve's vision uh, that he dies supposedly maybe in a car accident because it don't look like she had gotten injured or anything i think my assumption of this situation is that she got them home and then he probably went out again oh and was drunk driving yeah that's possible because she don't look like she had a scratch on her Mm -mm. Mm Um, and of course, you know, Moselle is sad and, you know, all of that. Cause of course her husband just passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, she got to get back to work. She, she got customers that's looking for her to. And Eve was the little, come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think caretaker the, too. The mm-hmm. important part of that scene is that we learn at that moment that Moselle has a gift mm-hmm. <laughs> and not just any gift. The woman is a seer. She's an intuitive, and she's she really seeing um, them ex them, not them what she's seeing, <laughs> but her dead husbands mm-hmm. um, in the mirror. And the the cinematography of her scenes, whoever did it, I'm like, yeah, they did. Y'all great. did that because it is very difficult to tell the story and transition into the scene too. And I feel like y'all did great. Yeah, the way she walked in and like was in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I definitely like that. Um, We also learn, you know, in just this little set of scenes, because, you know, again, we're not going scene, 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 scene. But in this set of scenes, uh, we also learn that um, Lewis is, again, philandering. (laughs) And Roz learns about this. And mm. yeah, mm. just just horrible. And the the mama, this is his mama, right? Mm-hmm. This is his mama. His mama, Moselle, and Roz are all talking, you know. And they learn like you can just hear the background. I tried. I replayed the scene like four or five times trying to hear what they were saying in the background. Mm-hmm. But uh, when Cicely walks in. And here's uh, Poe, I mean, watch, sees Poe and um, Eve eavesdropping. Uh-huh. I couldn't hear anymore what was going on in the background. Yeah. But you get the gist that the three ladies are in there talking about, you know, Roz is obviously tired of this because this does not seem like this is a first time occurrence. Um, but that she's tired of this. I have his children. Like, I can't believe that you're doing this to me. And then again, who knows? Cicely acts like the mama trying to protect dad again but also be nosy 
because she want to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine so that she can, you know, be parentified again and tries to protect dad when he comes in and, you know, she doesn't want him to go in and be confronted by, you know, mom, grandma, and auntie. And he don't and he care. Don't even ca- Push he right on they past always talking about, about me. Mm-hmm. Push right on past her. And looked at him and it is what it is. Yep. But also, you got to think about the time, too, and the lifestyle that they have. What was she really going to do? Or what was she going to be able to do? Nothing. You know, at that time in history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think another part that's important right before this is the conversation that he um, was being pulled into by his daughter asking about why you do this, daddy, why you do this, daddy. And like I said, Eve stay on that man neck. <laughs> like she's she like, that don't really make no sense. She and does. I'm just going to look at you like, I don't know what I'm talking about and blink mm-hmm. my eyes. And then I got to go now. Bye. Mm-hmm. Like she's, she stayed on top of her father and he, Really, that was the only person that checked him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on a consistent basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also thought, I was like, this is, this is so piss poor of him. As, you know, Eve is walking with him, oh. doing his rounds, you yeah. know, going to work, and you send your child outside so that you can sleep with one of your One of patients. your patients that look like she need to be in an asylum. Mm-hmm. I need Victoria. Don't be looking at <laughs> like that on this show, because that's all I kept thinking. It's so many. Oh, she um, was. Oh, the that's whole right. movie is full of <laughs> as the world operas. turns yeah. and uh, yeah. guide and light. Yeah. yeah, I said you mess around and see Timmy in there, even though that's from a show way later. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like I was like, mm-hmm. I, I remember that. I remember that part. Mm-hmm. I was just like, they sure I, were all I, of them. I've, yeah, that's so funny. Even Diane and Carol, when you think about it, Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, all my children. Uh, Mazel, she was on all my yeah. children. All my children. See, my my grandma watched the CBS ones, mm. Young and the Restless, mm. and that all that side. So mm-hmm. I never watched uh, the other ones. Because I've always Hospital. thought she had watched. the most beautiful dimples. dimples. Mm-hmm. 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 But baby, I was just like, oh, my nose was turned up the whole time. Yeah, and you like closed the door in your child's face. Mm-hmm. I know men and women that have done their kids like this because it looks more like they not doing what they actually doing. Mm-hmm. But you are putting your kids in a pathway to either become this woman mm-hmm. that you being intimate with, become their mama or become you. And neither one of them is a good option. Mm-hmm. The thing mm-hmm. about it is now you, you got your child asking you if you have more children. And you <laughs> got so her sitting it. outside <laughs> waiting on you. <laughs> right. Like you have this girl sitting outside of somebody's house, that sh- some stranger's house, so that you can engage in relations with this woman. On top of, she is a patient of yours. Now, I don't know if the Hippocratic Oath existed back then. I'm assuming it did. Mm-hmm. Um, there must not have been no ethics boards back then. It was a little bit more loose because you got to think about Kenzie. Mm. Cause I'm like, sir, you just out here wilding. I'm like, do you even have a medical license? Like what is, <laughs> did you just call yourself doctor and you went and got a stethoscope? I was just like, <laughs> I don't even know. Now <laughs> nah, he a doctor. Cause I'm just like, it must not have been insurance back then. Like everything was cash paid. Like I just was like, <laughs> no, nah, he didn't have to get cash paid. He got, uh, he got what he wanted. And we also learned that, you know, a little bit later, you see Moselle and Roz walking, um, that he has likely gotten somebody pregnant at some point in time. Um, and this person terminated this pregnancy because she talks about having given money, <laughs> him using her money mm. um, to help a woman out. Um and she talks about him being a fixer. And that mm-hmm. was a thing that she was attracted to. Right. Mm-hmm. And it made me think about the reasons that people choose partners, right? Because people choose partners for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. You know, selfish, unselfish, you know, all kinds of reasons. And 
it made me think about like, what was she trying to escape? Like, what was she trying to get, get away from? And what problem did she think he could fix? Well, because she said he was a he's a fixer, a healer, and he'll know how to take care of her. Mm. Right. And then I was looking at Moselle like, why are you not holding your brother accountable? Like, because he already thinks she's crazy, so they ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't gonna do nothing but manipulate and gaslight and put it back on her. True. Because she was like, we are we're just alike, mm -hmm. but y'all ain't. No. I get the cheating part, but this this something else. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that. Uh, I don't know if what type of manipulation this would fall under, but like her trying to tell her, like you know, just relax, just chill. One day he'll turn it around and he'll see, like he'll see you, you know, and he'll, he'll stop, stop looking and and for what and see you for what you really are. Right. Yeah. This so, is a word of advice to all women who say this stuff. Stop doing that yeah stop <laughs> lying about these men because y'all think being with a man is more important than being somewhere healthy by yourself stop saying that because mm -hmm. it irritates me because it's I was not like healthy. you just giving him license to act a damn fool right. like for real like you're just giving you're telling your sister-in-law let him run and hurt you and do whatever and just be patient one day we all about 78 well, when his thing, stuff don't work no more right then he'll settle down and he'll stop and be with you and by that time you've you've been hurt for so long you don't have nothing else to give him or you don't bash him upside the head <laughs> that part <laughs> all i thought about was color purple because <laughs> she gonna oh. she gonna shave mister mm -hmm. okay like you cannot play with people's emotions like this yeah like snapped is a show for a reason mm. okay this is like the og version of that you playing with people's children you playing with my my love and concern and my energy towards you but i think women have to take responsibility in that too mm -hmm. don't stop staying mm -hmm. i know i know i can't i know it's it's easier to stay say not to stay or stop say, staying but something's you, you it's only gonna be so much hurt you can take before you do snap mm -hmm. but the thing about it is then you snap and then don't know what happened well you stayed that's yeah. what happened yeah it, it's a no it feels like a no-win situation um until you make the decision to leave mm -hmm. and then you got to grieve your pain and all the things that you <gasps> went through and then eventually you know heal and come out on the other side they in, so then they get to the market they at the fortune teller and baby she gave her the business and, ugh, this frustrated me because it was like on point but vague at the same time which is normal because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, she told her to look to her children now this is the fortune or the seer um talking to Roz. um she tells her to look to her children and it ends up being true because her children ultimately are the ones that are going to keep her grounded and discover things about their daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both of them. Both of the girls. Mm -hmm. um, and she was saying to her also stay quiet because uh, sometimes a soldier falls on his own sword. Hmm. And Both of them. The fleshly kind too. Yes. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> uh, he clearly does in this film. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, you know, it felt I felt bad for her because obviously this was not what she wanted to hear. Right. No. You know, she most people want to go and they want to hear something good and, you know, all the fortune that I'm going to have and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. They the don't want to hear like, hey, your hu your husband is, um, you know, a rolling stone. But she did say everything will be fine soon. You'll be in the best place in about three years but even before that everything will be fine soon and she was not lying yes that is true. but you know we we cherry pick what we want to hear yes. right mm -hmm. like we rarely kind of think about the context of the stuff that we're hearing when it's stuff that we don't want to hear mm -hmm. um we just you know simply think about what's the effect on me yeah. not the system at large mm -hmm. and i'm hearing three years right like I ain't, none of that you said. I heard three years. What you Internal mean three years? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to feel better. What are you talking about, ma'am? <laughs> I want to feel better now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, of course, she tells Moselle, like, girl, he get be yourself on me from three around me. <laughs> no. Get, get thee from around me. She's a black widow. You a black widow. She cursed. And Which she then already kind of figured that out. But mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, you sat down and you already knew this. Mm-hmm. But I guess you needed confirmation. It's okay. She, I don't even know why she went over there because she didn't want to talk to her at first. I don't know, girl. But I guess the uh, two practitioners coming together they don't always end up well. Well, I guess mm-hmm. she was inquisitive, so she wanted to know what she what she saw. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also get that uh, another vision that happens in here um, that a child is going to be um, hit, mm-hmm. and this sends Roz into full blown panic, and. Yep. She says that the children are staying in the house. They ain't going away this summer. I don't want to hear it. Y'all staying <laughs> in the house. I said, oh, she going to get these poor kids a go for Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. Straight up cabin fever. And that is what happened. Especially yes. with that poor child Eve. She was on a whole other level. I said, oh, I wouldn't have had no teeth. <laughs> I would have had not a tooth in my head. Because they were doing the most. But I get it. Like you said, they were shut up in the house for who knows how many weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't, there's only so many things you can do inside of the house. And who wants to keep breathing that same air? You know, mm-hmm. just that. And well, I guess they may have had central AC back then or the beginning, early stages of it. Um, but we also talking about Louisiana in the summer. And you own on a bayou the swamp yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, who wants that oh no <laughs> um and you got somebody going through puberty no she been in the, the bathroom for days <laughs> well she's been coming out but she's been taking up the bathroom mm-hmm. for days. that child mm-hmm. uh there was also something that i thought was in the midst of you know, Raj trying to say that the kids are staying in the house and, you know, Lou, uh, Lewis being really dismissive mm-hmm. um, and disrespectful to even his mama. Yes. Um, at the table uh, was uh, grandma was like, look, some conversations are not appropriate for children. Like, I need y'all to like mm-hmm. get Take y'all that behind in your in your bedroom right. or something. Uh, and I, I thought that I, I did like that because there was a lot that happened in front of the children that would have made them grow up quicker than what they needed to. It definitely made Cicely grow up. Right. And grandma was like, look, hold on, mm-hmm. wait a minute now. Y'all need to go take grown folks' conversations into grown folks' areas. Because mm-hmm. not everything, while you want to be open and honest with your children, a lot of times they are just not developmentally um, at the age where they can understand some of the concepts and things that you're talking about. Yeah. Well, then, and then they hear him disrespecting Roz, which mm-hmm. then made Cicely begin to disrespect Roz. If he do it, so. right? Because and you don't say nothing. Yeah, but Cicely need to know she got a black mama, and that black mama will come across that table. Oh, I her. thought she was gonna slap her face off like, her face. Because Lynn Whitfield, because she can do them faces. Yeah, that that walk and that face over there when she walked over there after she said, "Do you th- don't you think you being a little immature?" Mm-hmm. Girl, I thought her face was gonna come clean off the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so also we learn in the midst while the kids are stuck in the house that uh eve shares with moselle that she's you know what she saw of her father mm-hmm. and i could not stand moselle's response to her <laughs> it was i said are y'all trying to give this girl <sighs> family secrets mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like why are y'all doing this to this child? Like, I don't understand. And you, you told her that you would kill her. Mm-hmm. And, and then she, backdoored that with hugging her and loving on her. Like, how are you expecting this child to reconcile them two statements together? Because you said it with. Mm-hmm. And she knew what type of killing she was talking about. It wasn't. This, well, this and, and the th- is practicing. You need to right. go somewhere and sit down. And then she was going to try to force her to, to see what she saw. To see what, see what she was holding back. Like, 
She was look, give me your hands. <laughs> like, ma'am. Yeah. No, let her let her tell you when she's ready. Yeah. Which part are you on? I, I later. thought Oh, the hands is when about oh, Sicily. Sicily. Yeah, that's later. This is so the one where Oh, I thought oh, I thought that's one you were talking about. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, she's telling her about the daddy. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, she's telling her about the daddy, and she goes, "Uh, you know, I'll kill you if you say anything about this." But then she like hugged her, and like, I'm like, "What?" And she made it appear like she was trying to protect Roz, but I think that's the problem. Y'all are protecting Roz in a way that she don't need to be protected. This, all of this, needs to come out mm-hmm. so that she can make an informed decision. Yeah, yeah. It's too many secrets. Mm-hmm. And again, I think this goes back to like what we were saying a little bit earlier, why some people leave their family mm-hmm. and, and stay away um, or people start to take on some of these behaviors that they observe mm-hmm. because obviously this is the way that we behave in a family setting. And yeah. it's just, you know, you're setting that person up for failure. Mm-hmm. But you see like in that same scene that infidelity, infidelity is likely something that runs mm-hmm. in their family, probably from their father. Yeah. on down because Moselle goes into, you know, telling her story about her husbands and, mm-hmm. you know, the one she let get away. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it wasn't to get away, it was okay. He got to go now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she describes the whole saying of, you don't know what, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Mm-hmm. You know, you were having an affair on your husband and you didn't see the resilience and the, the strength and the love that he actually had for you yep. until it came down to like this man's life mm-hmm. was being threatened in the moment. And then now, you know what, actually, hold on, wait a minute. I might actually like my husband. And in that moment, it was too late. That was it. Yep. And now you live with this regret mm-hmm. and guilt. Of course. And Absolutely. they, and they spirits is following you everywhere you go. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we get a little bit of a, a, a next scene where Cicely is waiting up for her father and fixes him a little bit of a nightcap. And, you know, I think you can see the, the beginnings of jealousy with the father. Mm. Uh, with Roz? Mm-hmm. Mm. I think... To me, when I saw that, and this is because of my own uh, family's history, is that I don't know if it was necessarily jealousy. I think it was her mama knew some someone right with her husband, mm. and that's a protection. You shouldn't be up this late with your daddy giving him alcohol, and he already got an issue keeping his hands to himself. I can definitely see that with Roz towards her. I'm thinking of Cicely towards Ross. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, not definitely. Ross towards Cicely, because you know the way she looked at him, you know, like the attitude, like how dare you mm-hmm. tell me, like this is my father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want you waiting up for him no more. Mm-hmm. But I completely agree with you about the mom towards the daughter, because it is kind of like mm, why, what, why are you waiting up for your daddy like that, and why are you fixing him a drink, mm-hmm. and creeping, you. You tiptoeing. Yeah. You know you're not supposed to be down here. No. Get in the bed with your sister. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> it's, it's taking on a different look than like a five-year-old waiting up for their father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you are waiting up like a woman waiting up she for the man. She's the only one waiting mm-hmm. up. It'd be different if she woke up all the kids and was like, hey, daddy's going to be home soon. Let's go wait on him. Right. No, you want a long time. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, all of that was unhealthy the sex therapist in me is like these are the results of some type of grooming behavior oh hey, well that, oh yeah that's, know, that's that what i had already thought i was like has just something pop happened up out of the blue right no well think about the way he would talk to her how close he would bring her in mm-hmm. you know they have their special thing um he takes up for her in front of the, you know, everybody, everybody, <laughs> you know, and lets her get away with, you know, the way she speaks and, you know, how she, because definitely back then you did not speak to adults like that. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why I was, that's why I was shocked that her face wasn't on the floor. Right. Nowadays, some kids would get away with that kind of stuff, but in the sixties, nah. 
Yeah, was not the, getting away with that in the sixties. Yeah, I thought something had already happened. So the way she was, I, yeah, I know, but I thought it had already happened the way she was acting toward him and the way he was acting toward her. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, that's why I was like, I don't remember this movie being this way. And you yeah. ain't supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Because you, I was, was younger. Yeah. There was a lot. Yeah. Um. So next, I, I don't know where this man came from. He's looking, Julian. He's looking for his wife. He shows up. Him and Moselle all of a sudden fall in love in like 30 minutes. I know. Well, I think you got to remember Moselle is a um, practitioner, mm -hmm. counselor, as they like to say, because, you know, these are good Christian people. And <laughs> you know how they do. You, mm -hmm. you can't do more than one thing. So mm -hmm. um, the round town, because he was looking for her, for his wife who ran off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, and she saw where he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that was what sparked it. But as soon as he saw her, it was like all that just melted uh -huh. away. I love you, Moselle. I mean, I might want a painting too in yeah. the nude or something. I was like, okay, this timeline we done sped that spend on that. up. But we know that that's her. Mm -hmm. She knows when she's found her next person because she she can't see mm -hmm. their future together. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in this next scene, you also see what uh, a panic attack looks like. Because mom's anxiety has gone through the roof mm -hmm. because one of her children is gone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And of course, she's keeping them inside because of the vision yep. uh, that one of the children is supposed to be hurt. And baby, when Eve come home, not Eve, I'm sorry, Cicely, Cicely comes home, she done chopped off about two feet of hair. Yeah. She, her, she got her mama hairstyle. <laughs> when I saw that, I said, oh, you went and got a grown woman hairstyle. First of all, who who cut your hair at the beauty parlor and that know it, you, it, know your family? Because you know they know them. And I can't think of any hairstylist. Even if you're an adult and you have that long of hair, a lot of stylists are very reluctant mm -hmm. to cut that much hair off of somebody's head. And she's a child. That's what I'm saying. Like, as an adult, they're reluctant. So let mm -hmm. alone yeah, a yeah. child with no parent. Yeah. Ain't nobody here with you, and it's pouring down rain. And you done messed up your present, Curry. She did. <laughs> right. I was like, oh, my goodness. And then the disrespect. It was on 10. That's why she got smacked in her mouth. Yes. I said, oh, there you go. Teeth gone. Mm-hmm. And this just sent poor little girl straight on into a depressive episode. I mean, she just went spiraled like, ooh. <laughs> uh, Cause she stayed, it, stayed, it, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> she stayed shut up in the room. Like she was like not talking to nobody, almost in a catatonic state. Yeah. Cause, um, Cause we later find out some other things actually took place that night. Mm -hmm. We don't know this at the time, but yes. Um, and you know, this is again, a good visual, I think for seeing like what this can look like in real time. Mm -hmm. Like when a person is just out of it and it's not their normal personality, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you need to be checking, you need to be having conversations. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, the thing about it is I think she had three things going on. She had a mama slapping her. She started her menses and what we'll we, find out later. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot mm -hmm. for a teenager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why you got to have conversations with your children about things. Mm -hmm. You know, warn Well, them. she didn't know. I mean, the, um, Roz didn't know. I'm just saying in general. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. being uh, conversing with your children about a variety of topics. Yeah. So that they are under, they know what to look for. They and know how scared to. to yeah, because she she probably didn't know what was going on about with her body. Mm -mm. Like, she probably thinks she did something or the what happened between her and her dad did it or something. Yes, absolutely. You know, which would make sense in the mind of a child. Yeah. Cause we forget, you know, sometimes people think of teenagers and they turn them into adults, but like, no, this is still the mind of a child. Yeah, that's you matured. Know. She mm -hmm. got another decade before that happened. At least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> At least. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we also learned uh that somebody has gotten hit. Yeah. Uh, and they're rejoicing this. 
which I thought was so disturbing <laughs> and disrespectful uh, to that Thank young you. boy's family, to him, um, because you guys didn't even know who got hit. The grandmother had to say, well, whose child was it? Mm -hmm. Like y'all and, and tell them to stop rejoicing. Like do not rejoice yeah. at the death of somebody's child. Yeah. And once you see the image, you can, you can see the resemblance of, Oh, mm -hmm. right. That's who I thought it was, was at like, first. Oh my. Okay. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At first I, I was. I was uh -huh. like, oh man. Um, but yeah. So then also, you know, they finally learned what's going on with Cicely that she's, you know, started her, her, uh, transition into womanhood. Mm -hmm. And this is the first like inkling that lets you know something ain't right with her and the father because mm -hmm. she don't even want him to look at her she don't want him to touch her and all throughout the movie up until this point she has desperately craved his attention yep and to have that drastic of a turn mm -hmm. you know i don't have children but as a parent i'd be like wait what mm -hmm. what you mean you don't want your daddy to look at you you don't want him to touch you what you mean like you said, observing behavior, mm -hmm. like that's a huge flip and a big red flag. Yep. That was ignored, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I think Roz was too busy blaming herself because she thought it was because she slapped her. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then she kind of glossed over the fact that, you know, you didn't have that. You didn't. She cut her hair off. She didn't have that situation. You had another conversation with her about, I don't want you downstairs with your daddy. Mm -hmm. You're doing too much. Right. I'm going to wait up for him. So mm -hmm. you then go into the fact that your child just dropped off. Mm -hmm. Like that from fiery push back to invisible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, catatonic. Mm -hmm. In a stupor. Because she was not responding at all nope just weepy yeah so sad po thing uh so we get um eve's at the market she comes across the the shaman for the first or not i say shaman she comes <laughs> the across the, the priestess uh, <laughs> for the first time but nothing really happens with them at this point mm -hmm. but this interaction she scared the crap out of her. right she this interaction is Im <laughs> important because she knows this woman is there. Yeah. And she knows what this woman practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a setup for a little bit later on in the film. Yeah. Um, you know, this next kind of set of scenes we just discussed, you know, like Cicely um, being really depressed and Roz, you know, you know kind of taking it on, believing it's her, her fault. Mm -hmm. um, and they discuss sending her away. Mm-hmm. And she agrees. Uh, I think she's and going they, to her that, other grandmother's house. Yeah, her oh, mama. I thought they, she was going to a hospital. No, she went to her, her Roz's mama's house. Her the grandmother's, right, okay. Oh. Um, and I felt bad for Eve, because she's like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. What you mean you're going away? Why are you That's going to- That's her best friend. Like, you about to leave me alone here with them? Like, tell me why are you leaving me? Yeah, she was pleading with her sister. Uh, and that's when I was like, this little girl can, act. I mean, she's a grown woman now, but I was like, this little girl can act, boy. Oh, both of them, really. Yeah. But, man, I was like, go, Eve. Um, so then she finally tells her her interpretation of what happened that night. Because, of course, you get two, mm -hmm. two uh, perspectives of the same situation. Um, but she tells Eve, her interpretation of what happened and in her from her point of view um her father came on to her after she tried to comfort him and because he seemed you know distressed and she normally again she goes waits for him and they have their thing mm -hmm. and he took things a little too far she was resistant he pushed her and exactly. smacked her and this is the same night she cut all her hair off, mm -hmm. which is the night the world turned. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, this sends Eve into a rage. Yeah. And she going to protect her sister. Yep. 
and that boil and anger. Yes, not healthy. Cause this is the kind that stews. This is the look when we call mm -hmm. playing the long game. Mm -hmm. Cause she start playing the long I'm game plotting. here. And she, yes, Lord have mercy. So of course Cicely leaves and goes to go with her other grandmother. Um, this and, this picture right here, y'all, is one of the best pictures of the whole scene mm -hmm. because it's like don't tell nobody, but it's also a sim a symbol of all the secrets that are going on in this family. Mm -hmm. How there's so much deception and there's so much mm -hmm. um, repressing mm -hmm. that specifically happens to the women in this family. And Mazel saw that. Yeah, that's what made her start was questioning. Like, wait a uh huh. Like wait, y'all sending her away, and what's she doing? To, to what's she doing this for? What's that? So of course <laughs> she gonna do some investigating on her own too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but well, I don't play. Mm -mm. Uh, so her Moselle and Eve, you know, kind of talk about um, like what was it that you was going on with you, mm -hmm. and she doesn't really want to tell her. Yeah, because she plotting in her head. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this. Mm -hmm. And she's like, uh, uh, you going to tell me. Mm -hmm. So she asks for Eve's hands, but apparently Eve has the gift of locking away what she don't want to, to be, be seen. seen. Yeah. She's like, well, keep it to yourself then. As a matter of fact, I will. Eve was going at that point. That's when like the table started turning and you like, you see Eve truly coming into her gift. Cause y'all got to remember this is, this is a story about, Creole people. So mm -hmm. she coming fully into her seer gifts and she's like, I can do the same thing you can do. Because mm -hmm. I already seen it. Yeah, she been having visions the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, dad comes home late again. You know, he had been out there, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and this just is giving her more fuel to her fire. Like, you... <sighs> Oh, I can't stand you, you nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she was thinking. Um, and you can just tell, like, there's darkness, you oh, know, yeah. for, I imagine for um, people that practice the type of um, spirituality. spirituality that they do, you know, there's a, you can practice this for dark or you can practice this for light mm -hmm. and you can see the beginnings of her like that dark practices is brewing mm -hmm. inside of her because she go back and see the the, the priestess mm -hmm. yeah but she already knew what she needed she done grabbed hair she done boxed it up like she over here really plotting but the problem is because she hasn't been educated on what the proper practices are. Mm -hmm. If you want something, something has to be given. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't want to pay that price. Exactly. That part. <sighs> so, of course, she gets up to the, the priestess and she... Oh, I felt so many ways about this. I was like, she offered her $20, or she said she had $20, mm -hmm. and she wanted her father she deceased. Well, oh, she said she wanted somebody deceased. Yeah. Um, she refused to tell her who it was. And I was like, I was so upset with the priestess because I'm like, you see, this is a child. One, you took this young girl's money. Mm -hmm. You took all of it. And $20 in the 60s was a lot. Like it was, it's not, you know, today $20 is like, you know, five it's cents. Gone. It's gone now. <laughs> but, <laughs> But $20, it was a lot back then. You yeah. took it from a child and the thing that she was asking for. You didn't like, she's a child. You didn't question it. You didn't, first of all, you didn't take her to her mama. Well, she's not friends with the Batiste. She may not be, but you, this child is asking you to do something dangerous. Like, yeah. she did her, her, are you sure this is what you want? Are you sure this is what you want? And I think... Her mindset is, you know, yo, aunt practice why she ain't taught you none of this. So you already knew what she was getting into. But that I feel like when you practice whatever faith, you need to have a level of responsibility uh, for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, because belief is the main 
component. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you believe some hard enough, a lot of times things going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, making uh, decisions in an emotional state, mm-hmm. you are often going to make a decision that will come back and bite you in the behind very hard, which mm-hmm. is what happened in Eve's case. Or haunt you. Mm-hmm. Or haunt you, you know, which is what happened in this case, right? Yeah. So she wanted something so badly, but she didn't truly, because she is a child and children are very impulsive and emotional and very self-centered. And don't know what to do with any of those emotions. And she's, she's only 10, y'all. I don't know if we said her age earlier, but right. Eve is only 10. So. Mm-hmm. so she's making a decision that she cannot even at this point even imagine what the consequences of that decision truly are yeah. or the length of time that you will deal with them in the future. Mm-hmm. Which is why I was so disappointed in the priestess. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know this is a child. And even though I agree with you that she she knows that her aunt practices, but she's still a child. She's still the practitioner, though. She's the one that laid right. um, the spell. She's the one that did the ritual and the work. And mm-hmm. the fact that she was even giving her what she did um, when Eve comes back to try mm-hmm. to stop it. She's the adult. She was like, oh, it's already done. Yeah. Right. I thought she was going to give me a voodoo doll. No. Who told you that? Because she was already practicing with her little voodoo doll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she like, no, nah, girl, it was. I did that this afternoon. Like, what, it's already done. And then it's like, now the reality of my decision sets in. Mm-hmm. But you can tell that uh, Elzor, Diane Carroll's character she she walked a, a fine line because she laughed at her. She was like, oh, it's too late. It's, mm-hmm. it's too late. So, of course, you know, Eve is walking back and she locates her father um, at a it's local me too. juke joint. And he is all up on Mrs. Moreau. But the oh, we she- forgot. At one point when uh, Eve saw Mr. Moreau at the yes, mm-hmm. market, at the market, she was very coded mm-hmm. in her language. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, she is wise beyond her years. Uh, and basically telling Mr. Moreau, your wife and my father, uh, they got a thing <laughs> yeah, I think going on. She was, uh, Mr. Moreau works for Xavier and travels back and forth instead of them moving to where Xavier is, Xavier University in Louisiana. Um, and says, don't, don't miss Maddie get lonely. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, I guess you do, you know. Well, you know, my daddy get lonely too. And sometimes too lonely people get together. Hey. I said, ma'am, how do you know to talk like this? Tell Why somebody is- that they having an affair without telling them. Because <laughs> he was sitting there. He, said, huh. he was like, wait. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, hold on. Did this child just tell me mm-hmm. that my friend that... Is having an affair with my wife. Yeah. And they've all known each other. Yep. Because Miss Miss Monroe, uh, Maddie, know them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so she gets to the juke joint and sees her father with uh, Maddie Monroe. And she is essentially begging her father, like, let's go. Like, come on now. And he, like, he's drunk. Uh, and he's pushing her like he done sent her outside and tell talking about some. I, I'm gonna be out there and just you sent her outside in the dark. My thing is also uh, alone. Why Maddie looking at your daughter like that, girl? Because she is the side, right? She was. Uh, I couldn't believe she looked at her like that. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, you're not ever gonna get one. Right? Like she was disgusted that you would have the audacity, yep. to interrupt me and my man. I was she like, be playing these roles. Though. She do. I, I was like, trying to remember what character she played that she was in Love Jones that cheated on somebody oh. else. I could not remember who it was. I was like her she and cousin in Faith. Love Jones. <laughs> she was in uh, the Twa series. She sure was. Um, she? she been in a many a movie. She has hmm. been actually. Um. So Eve goes outside, but in the midst of going outside, she see Mister Moreau coming in. Toe up. That the way he walked on that um 
railroad track. I said, what in the Freddie Q is going on? I was on? like, why is he walking on the track? He was coming for Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to be home. He was on a oh, mission. Yes. On a mission. And he came in there and confronted um, Lewis, took his wife. Ooh, he can play a drunk person, though. He he is he got his alcohol consumption uh, acting on point. Cause yes. A lot of his movies, he'd be toe up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And but I thought even in his toe upness, he mm-hmm. still confronted him in a way that was like, we can walk away from this situation because mm-hmm. I'm going to take my wife and then we're going to go deal with this at the house. Mm-hmm. Don't leave her alone. Don't talk to her. Don't talk about her. Mm-hmm. Like we don't exist to you no more. It makes me wonder, though, how stupid Maddie is, because, you know, this man with all these women. Do you really think you special? Because yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure he ain't saying you special because he don't seem like that's his his form of narcissism. No, but she did though. Because mm-hmm. I I'm probably I'm the one that he's out in public with. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I'm the special one. Because mm-hmm. you at these other I'm the real houses, side piece. Mm-hmm. I'm the number one. I'm the one that's been to your house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the one that's. It, it, so she probably in her mind she thought that she it. was the special one, hmm. running with that potential, huh? Mm. Mm. and because you know he's a doctor and you know whatever but mr moreau confronted the situation and confronted it in a way that we can all walk away and go live our separate lives me and my wife will go deal with our stuff you go deal with yours yep very respectful because he's like you still my friend and he told like dude like i love you yeah and you having sex with my you betrayed yeah and he ain't got no proof proof yet but it's enough evidence on the bar mm-hmm. that he can see something ain't right right because even the bartender said something yeah y'all got caught now hmm. hey <laughs> come on that mean y'all been up here many a time mm-hmm. so because you are you know narcissist and maybe even a smidge antisocial hmm. um you just couldn't let it go. You had to just get your piece in one more time and tell this man's wife good night. Night, Maddie. And he said, I told you. He didn't say this, but, he, you know, this is what he did. I told you keep my na- my wife's name out your mouth. He will smith him. He did. And boom, boom. I'm just glad he had the good enough sense to push Eve out the way. But then you you still did something to traumatize your daughter again. He did the same thing with uh, Moselle and Harry. That's the same way he antagonized mm-hmm. Harry like mm-hmm. before he passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he doesn't have respect for other people. Yeah. Right. It ain't even about women, women versus men. He just don't have respect for other people. Yeah. Nobody but himself. Mm-hmm. And you... Again, you were so self-centered that you couldn't even real like your child is here. Mm-hmm. She caught you again, mm-hmm. again, with this woman. She's alone. Why? First of all, that would have sobered me up immediately. What are you doing here? Well, he did say that he was sober for half a second, and <laughs> he realized she was all right and wasn't nothing wrong. But still, how did you get here? Why are you here? Who Look knows that you're here? <laughs> Nobody. It's dark outside, and your 10-year-old has she walked done, to this juke she joint. She done walked all over this parish. Mm-hmm. All over it. She done been at her house. She done went to the market. She done went back to her house. She done went to the bayou. That's not her bayou. Then she done ran all around town looking for your sorry butt, and then she done found you at the juke joint way on the other side of town, probably nowhere near y'all house. It's With so this same... Mm-hmm. Floozy hussy. again. And then I'm begging you, let's go. I'm begging you, and you can't even have the wherewithal to get out of your own feelings because you feel like Mr. Moreau disrespected you. Mm-hmm. When in reality, you and her are disrespecting him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. who was part of y'all's unions, the bartend, the bar patrons. We don't want to see this. Yep. Now we're going to be traumatized every time. You remember that one time 
And there he landed right there. You remember that? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I can't even go there no more. Right. <laughs> right. They be shooting people up. up. <laughs> like, it was just too much. So, yes, again, you've now traumatized your child. And, again, core memory. Mm-hmm. So now because I went to the priestess and asked for this thing and it came to pass, and I know we're talking about a specific mm-hmm. um, lifestyle for that region, but, you know, if we were to pull it out of that setting, we know in reality she did not create that scenario but because i wanted this thing i sought this thing and then it happened that now has solidified in my brain that i directly led to my father's death Mm -hmm. and in some ways she did because she also was the one that helped mr monroe know that something was going on true but at the end of the day the fall still lays with maddie and um lewis lewis Mm -hmm. papa lewis yeah yep and i was just thinking as i was watching the end of this film like this poor child gonna need so much therapy Mm -hmm. i could see if she was immediately depressed from there yeah oh yeah but it's just and anxious it's so sad because you see the like the effects like the ripple effect of how this is going to impact a a town Mm -hmm. family those kids are forever going to be messed up. Yeah. And it all kind of comes full circle when uh, now Roz really does have to lean into her children. Mm-hmm. I thought something was interesting, and I don't know if y'all saw this, but pretty much from her seeing uh, the priestess at the market on, the only color that eve wears is blue and blue in the spiritual world tends to be like your voice Mm. um it tends to be like clarity it tends Mm. to be like all that kind of stuff so i was like what you trying to tell us i noticed that she was wearing the same outfit i did too Mm -hmm. well what she wore to the funeral what she had after that mm-hmm. what she wore, she wore that market. same she pretty much wore that same the cardigan little thing. cardigan throughout the whole film mm-hmm. mm. now that you say that i'm like mm-hmm. she did wear that though pretty much through the whole film yeah yeah so as the the very last bits and pieces of the film um moselle talks to um Eve, I'm going to say Roz. <laughs> <laughs> moselle talks to eve about flying and you know allowing herself to be free and it seems like she's gonna leave the bayou and maybe she hasn't left before and this is kind of like her launching off into living a new life and not being the black widow yeah i think she's gonna let herself be free to fully love julian um and not be bogged down by all that guilt yeah um, Mm -hmm. that she's probably been experiencing but I think she also left some good nuggets for mm-hmm. me to live by to also work on her stuff because mm-hmm. this is going to leave yep. a mark on her spirit for the rest of her life. Oh, for sure. Um, and also to not really don't turn away from her gifts either because mm-hmm. that'll make you shut down quicker than anything. I done did all of this and now my daddy gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also learn the second perspective of the event that took place between Cicely and the father, for some reason, he, I guess Moselle must have confronted him Mm -hmm. about it. What's Um, wrong with my nieces. mm -hmm. And so he writes Moselle a letter and outlines the exact same scenario. However, the intention was different. I feel like he made the intention Mm -hmm. be different. Because he even was talking about my f- most favorite child, the one I love the most, the dearest. And then he goes on to say, you know, I know I took it too far, but I never meant to hurt her. Sir, what are you saying mm-hmm. that you're not saying? Because I'm mad. Yes. Now, the part that I wish was in the general movie is that the director of this film talks about the fact that there actually was sexual assault that occurred and there is a whole character that actually witnessed it, Mm. but he was mute 
and he couldn't say it. So there was no way for him to describe what had happened. And I think it was mm. Roz's brother was living with them and he gotcha. actually witnessed everything. And so I was like, ah, because everybody's like, well, well no, she just went through puberty. No, no. <laughs> puberty, puberty is rough, but it ain't that level of rough. Yeah. Mm. So there was some essay that went on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, the truth always lies somewhere in the middle. Because mm -hmm. I definitely think father groomed her. Oh, heavily. for sure. Um, she would have never been able to get married. Oh, yeah. Oh, he would have stopped that mm -hmm. at every, every cost. Um. I definitely think he groomed her and at the risk of sounding like victim blaming, um, I think she wanted his approval and des she was so desperately seeking him, it made it easier for him to. Um, well, she's romanticizing it at that point. Yeah. Um, I had someone that I mentored a long time ago where a similar situation occurred, not with her biological parent, but with someone that was close to her. and having talked to her, you know, over the years, you know, the way that type of grooming takes place, it ends up pitting the adult woman against the young woman. Mm -hmm. And you think that y'all are adversaries vying for the love of this man and you romanticize that love and you don't really realize what's happened mm -hmm. to you until it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. Cause I definitely don't think it was her fault under any stretch no. of the imagination it's just these set of circumstances they just did not blend well together no dang but they burnt no no they don't burn a letter they drown the letter mm -hmm. um that her father wrote but what's her name goes to her first because she's like tell me the truth mm -hmm. tell me what really happened and i'll believe you yeah she she didn't she didn't want to believe that her sister was alive. She didn't want to believe that her father did what he actually did. Mm -hmm. And this is where we see um, Eve step fully into her gifts yeah. from a place of light versus a place of darkness. Yes. And she's like, give me your hands. But the trauma has been so severe with Sicily that the memory, it, it just stops. She can't access the memory, which is common mm -hmm. in trauma. Like your brain goes into protection mode. Yeah. And so it may never come back. It may stay blocked the whole time, or you might get little nuggets that come up as you, um, your mind feels that it's safe. Mm -hmm. to do. And the reason why it does that is because our brain protects us from certain things that we are not ready to handle or not able to handle. And or shouldn't when, have to handle that too and once you a lot of times those memories can come unlocked when um you go through therapy however if you're with someone who is very gentle it's either gonna seep out little by little or it's still not gonna come out because it's the, the therapist is not gonna lead you in that direction mm -hmm. that's a lot yeah but they drown the letter and you know, that is like the re-solidification of them as sisters. Because, you know, there was like this little moment in time where they were, they were in a rough patch. Yeah, um, but this, this brought them back together. Yeah. yeah. It, and it showed like the power of like forgiveness. It showed, you know, what true support looks like. It's not always going to be that I'm by your side and I think you... Mm -hmm. your, your crap don't stink sometimes it's going to be like I'll knock your head off but I love you I really do mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> yeah for sure uh, so that's the end of the movie of course you know the narrator who is you know the voice of Eve you know kind of wraps up the mm -hmm. film with her narration but essentially that's the end of the movie yeah okay so uh, ratings or no actually let's go through diagnoses and things that you saw in the film PTSD, uh, anxiety, acute stress. Actually, let me say acute stress and anxiety, generalized anxiety, um, major depression, panic uncompli attacks, uncomplicated bereavement mm -hmm. um, for multiple people mm -hmm. throughout. Um, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, personal history of sexual abuse. That one, <laughs> I would say. I would even say sibling rivalry in the beginning, the jealousy mm -hmm. phase of life issues for Sicily. Absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the which one is the one is partner distress dis, uh I can't remember the name of it's like mm-hmm. spouse spousal and, distress. Disturbance or something, or something like, like that. that. I can't they remember was the, fighting in their marriage. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. I can't remember the way it's worded specifically. It's a Z code. Uh, yeah, it's a Z code. Uh, um, what else is in there? We got some personality disorder. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you also have um, some alcoholism. Alcoholism. You have spiritual abuse um, and trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, and SA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say also there is some neglect from mom um, because she's in her own world, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Elder abuse. (laughs) (laughs) Because he was tearing people up, man. Yes. uh, Infidelity. That's a Z code as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Panic attacks. um, Mm Because Eve did have a panic attack. Can't think of nothing else. I would I would say uh both essays sexual abuse and sexual addiction. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't think about that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and the reason why it would be sexual addiction is because he was not living a polyamorous lifestyle and living it from a healthy place. When you look at addictions, it normally wreaks havoc on your daily life. You can't stop yourself. And so And it was affecting relationships in his life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's not the specific acts, it's the way in which they were performed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think all of those things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rating. Uh so I'm gonna give two different ratings. Mm-hmm. The acting in this film, mm-hmm. giving it a five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Specifically, uh, Journey Smollett mm-hmm. and Megan Good. Mm-hmm. I'm specifically giving these two young ladies fives. Mm-hmm. The film itself, mm-hmm. I'm gonna give a three. Okay. Um, because you didn't get the director's cut. Right. I think there's some plot points that are yep. missing. <laughs> um, to kind of help bring some of the story together. Um, I think some of the pacing in the film is a bit odd. Um, but so I give the film a three, but specifically those two young ladies fives. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So I give the acting definitely a five. I believe, um, they picked great people for each role that they really chose. Um, and you, they, really pick seasoned folks. Cause if you know anything about the Smollett gang, it's a lot of them. Um, they have been acting since birth mm-hmm. essentially. Um, but also all of the people mm-hmm. that are in the soaps were in this show or they yeah. had some type of gift or talent. Like you can tell in older movies that they chose the cream of the crop. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for the movie, for me, I honestly give it a five as well, but this is also part of my culture. <laughs> so, yeah, I I can see the different nuances and things like that. And I also know about the director's cut, which they weren't able to actually see the director's cut or hear the director's interviews to know like the pieces of the movie that were missing. But they were they just did not allow her to do the movie that mm-hmm. she filmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Well, that's that. Another one in the bag, y'all. <laughs> uh, so uh, next month, we got a whole lot of things going on, but we're not going to tell you about it. We're going to mm-hmm. make it a surprise. There's also a, a, a disc broad. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be going live, y'all. <laughs> See y'all later. <laughs>